Silence is an art project and exhibition which builds on research into how people react to inflammatory bowel disease. This particular research was very much about how South Asian women live with IBD and how disabling it is and that they really live with a condition uh, in silence. Um, and it was very clear that there was a lot of perceived stigma about IBD amongst families and their wider communities. And in order to change stigma, we really need to share this and get people to change their opinion and affect culture. Now we know the rates of IBD are increasing in South Asian groups. Our research has found the lack of awareness of IBD by South Asian patients before the diagnose by the family and the wider South Asian community, which is partially but not wholly responsible for the large levels of perceived stigma of having IBDs in these communities. Which means patients do not disclose their illness to other people, sometimes not even on parents, and if they are being stigmatised. In relation to the South Asian community, um, people need to stop viewing bags and inflammatory bowel disease so negatively. It's a bag, it's not disgusting in any way, it's just a different way of going to the toilet. We found that there are difficulties regarding marriage and parenthood, a lot of pressures to get married. But it's complicated because those patients are no longer considered marriage material particularly if the patient has a stoma, and that can have devastating consequences across the different generations. You're trying to overcome a condition yourself, and then people from the community are throwing these comments at you. It's quite heartbreaking. Um, so we'd just like to say, be a bit more mindful. You never know what anyone's going through, really. The role of food, particularly spicy food, cannot be underestimated. Because patients often believe spicy food is responsible for some of the symptoms, which means that they avoid eating spicy food, which means they also have to avoid attending important family and social functions because they will have to eat and they can't, and that can be difficult or problematic for them. People used to come up to me with homemade remedies, but if you try to say to them, actually there's no cure for inflammatory bowel disease, they don't, kind of, they don't want to be wrong. So I learnt over the years to just not challenge them and just accept the homemade remedy and they'd be like, have you tried it? And I'm like, yeah, I've tried it. And they just chucked it in the bin. It just saved a lot more arguments, really. This and many other factors meant that all our participants experienced significant psychological distress. So our study recommended there was a need to, one, raise awareness of IBD in South Asian communities and two, to help destigmatise the condition within those communities. To try to tackle these problems, the researchers turned to Wolverhampton's School of Art. We managed to get some funding from the Arts Council for the project because um, certainly within the School of Art we want to pay artists to do this kind of work. It is valuable so we, we pitched to the Arts Council and they agreed to fund it. Um, and then we went out to an open call to artists. We ran an information evening at the School of Art and invited anybody interested in the project to come along. You know, I think the School of Art has a long tradition of uh, socially engaged practice and I think actually we got a really big range of um, artists responding to it. So we were able to pick somebody working with fashion, sculpture, animation and live poetry and photography. So I presented to the artists when um, they first put out the call, so there was a huge amount of interest because I was worried that nobody would really be wanting to do it because it's, it's quite unusual. Um, but there was loads of interest and, and some patients in the audience I didn't even know were, had artistic hobbies on the side, so that was really interesting. Um, so I presented to them about what the disease was like and how difficult it could be to live with and gave them a real medical perspective um, and tried to convey the emotional perspective. But we used our, the research that we'd done and the transcripts from the interview we'd had with women um, to allow them to sort of feel the, the patient side and then bring the two together. Then they put a proposal together uh, and we pulled a panel together of uh, people from the art school, people from psychology, one of the patients and we interviewed about 15 artists and were able to offer five residences for artists to come and work within the School of Art and use our facilities and and to make the work in response to the project. I created three saris. They're printed with H&E scans from the inside of the stomach of sufferers of ulcerative colitis. Each sari represents different stages of the disease. It's my drawing, but my drawing was based upon a scan, a H&E scan of a sufferer of ulcerative colitis. So um, this one behind you is a sufferer who's very inflamed, their stomach's very inflamed, so um, that was scanned, um, their, their stomach was scanned, um, and then med med medical doctors add um, ink to the stain and that 
brings out the disease. Um, I then took that, drew it, made it into my own drawing, um, and then this was repeatedly printed onto a sari. These colours that are so vivid, these patterns that are from a, ulcers in a stomach, actually do make a beautiful form. So it was printing them on a beautiful garment for these girls that could flaunt their disease and not hide it. I'm a sufferer of ulcerative colitis myself, and so it meant a lot for me to be involved, but to also look at the contrast of the South Asian community treat the disease. A sari is a garment worn by South Asian women. Um, it's a very proud garment, it's for special occasions. My sari is a four metres long, which is very short for a sari. It can be any material, but I chose mine to be printed on silk because that is traditional Nivy style of sari. I didn't want it to look obvious that it was a print of ulcers. Um, I wanted it to look like a pattern, so if a girl did wear it who was a sufferer, it wouldn't be obvious. It's done in a way that actually it subverts the idea that IBD will be challenging your femininity or your womanhood. You say you can still be an Indian woman, very beautiful, and still wear a sari and, and be confident. People with inflammatory bowel disease don't always speak about it. I was used as a case study for two of the art pieces, two of the videos. I think they definitely portray my experience to a T. Um, I think it's come across in a really like um, animated way which is good for me to see because obviously I've been through it but to see like a picture and a film that goes alongside it just adds a lot more meaning to it. In the bed next to me and she stops and says are you Pal Binder? So I said yes. She handed me the flowers and starts crying and I said what are they for? I just really really want to thank you. You saved my daughter's life. You're my family superhero. You helped my daughter so much. I hold my hands up. We are uneducated. We came from Pakistan. We had no idea how poorly she is. I feel terrible not to be the mum she wanted. If you didn't pump her full of positivity, and push her to go for surgery. I don't think I'd have my daughter now. I said no. It's the surgeon you want to thank. You were there for her when she needed you. It was really moving. This is something that I'm quite passionate about. Art, especially animation, is such a great platform for social issues. A lot of people share the same experiences, it's just that we don't know how to talk about it. So I think art's really important. Me and Alicia, we sat down for, for about an hour or something in a cafe and I was like just asking her questions and she was telling me about all different aspects of like how it, it affected her and you know how she feels about it then and now. I can see how she's feeling almost, like I can visualise the emotions. In my film, the stoma, which could be perceived quite negatively, it's been turned into a rose because that's how Alicia saw it. She saw it, she thought, oh it looks like a rosebud. And that I think is such a great thing to be able to do, to see something that might be traumatic and see the beauty in it. Uh, it's a 2D animation, um, it was done on a software package called TV Paint and so basically every little movement I would have to draw and redraw and redraw. So I think about, I think there's like 2,000 drawings in this for just a minute and a half. <laughs> but um, I like animation as a medium because of its, well it's limitless basically. You, anything you can imagine, if you can draw it, you can create it, so, which is really great for like talking about conditions or mental health or anything that's really difficult to communicate verbally, you can communicate visually. It's like a really great way to open up a discussion and share emotional states. The animation had the biggest impact on me and it actually made me feel quite emotional and a bit tearful so that's, that's certainly the one that's touched me the most. 
but I also very much like the, uh, the, the desk drawer where the juxtaposition between the medical appointments and the, the patient letters and the drugs, that's actually very beautiful as well. So I really like what the artists have achieved here. They've, I think, really represented women and particularly the South Asian women, which is obviously what we're aiming for. Matt Jones is actually one of our master's students at the School of Art, so it was really, really pleased to get some um, applications from our own students. And I think what all the artists have picked up on is this tension between, uh, I think, the kind of formal medical side of the, that they have to cope with and how that affects their kind of personal kind of sense of self and in particular femininity or womanhood in some way. Uh, and I think this piece of work is really interesting because it kind of lays that out. I think the dressing table is a really private space for most women uh, where you do have all your potions and bottles and the things that you, you use to dress up with. And so here you, you, it's kind of intermingled amongst all the sort of things that you would naturally find on the dressing table. There's also all the kind of medical paraphernalia and the kind of appointment cards and all the things. So you start to see this sort of clash of the decorative bangle or the medical tag, if you like, and how these both form part of somebody's life or identity. October 2019, and at Wolverhampton's New Cross Hospital, the exhibition is ready for the official opening. On hand are the researchers, patients and artists behind the project and the city's mayor. Are these the colours that um, they yeah, use? Yeah, yeah. Right. challenging, yeah, yeah. but like, I think it's quite a nice do. So it is spicy food. The gathered audience is introduced to the because research. Because often believed spicy food is responsible. So to the art. When we came with this project, uh, we were delighted to try and make it. And to the IBD patients. Tell me what I've gone through each time they meet me. Thank you. There's a flurry of tweets in response. This is a quite um, and a live link up approach, with BBC really News, is showing the level of interest the in this point. unique project. And come and have a look. Inflammatory bowel disease has been used as a subject for poetry here in this video. I suppose one of my kind of more initial concerns was that I didn't want artists to be simply illustrating somebody else's ideas or thoughts it wasn't a, it wasn't that kind of project in some way they had to take ownership of the of the ideas um, and I think that's happened in in different ways really but but what's interesting is they've read into the transcripts and I think out of that sort of reading into it certain themes have kind of come out that they've been able to to pick up and start to work with through their own practice. This is a very beautiful way of sharing illnesses and I don't see why this couldn't be modelled with other illnesses. But I think also very good for those diseases that carry a huge emotional impact and um, I can really see this working really well with obesity and the kind of bullying and the shame feelings that come with, with that and, and helping people understand it's not a matter of willpower, it's so much more complicated than that. So absolutely I see this translating, I would very much like to repeat this with other, other parts of our areas of work.